Hello everybody and welcome to the preview for, on the lesson number three, Invisible Math, and this is a bit funny, exponents and connecting the curriculum. The goal of this lesson will be to review the various invisible components of math, concepts and strategies for teaching the students. You will also review the rules of exponents and how to apply them in a math context. This is one of the most common areas where students struggle in their learning. It's why we've put it at the beginning of this course. And I find that regardless of the age or level of the participants, exponent errors happen regularly, and it's important to cover them. Lastly, I'm going to highlight some key ideas about drawing connections across the curriculum in an activity we're going to engage in during class time. So, you're looking at these numbers, and each number is doing something. Consider that this number here, the number 4, is the central important number. It would be just a regular old number like any other. Take a moment, pause the video, and ask yourself, what are the other numbers doing to the number 4? Alright, hopefully you've taken a pause to figure out what each of these numbers are doing. But let's go in and examine. In this case, and I'm going to zoom in here, there we go. Oops, there we go. There is a multiplication happening. It is three times whatever all this mess is. This number right here, it, we're going to come back to. It is one of the weird ones that people aren't necessarily used to seeing unless they are coming from a background in math. This one right here is an exponent. It represents repeated multiplication. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And lastly, we have our elusive number two here. This is a subscript. And if you ever see numbers in this position, it means a subscript, or you can think of it as a name for the, num for the number or letter. There are other positions that can also be used, but we're not gonna focus on those right now. For example, I could have a variable represented with numbers down here, and the number placement actually changes the meaning of the number. But we're not going to focus on that right now. We'll focus on the main ones that people use. The subscript, even in that case, is a little bit um, elusive and, and not used as often. So don't stress too much. Your focus should be on the 3 and the 5 here, or rather their placement, beside and above. Think about all of the symbols in math that aren't there, but that are there. We don't draw them in. So let's look. Implied brackets. When we have a fraction 3 plus 5 over 7 minus 3, these implied brackets here play a significant role when we're working with numbers. I see this in students when I'm working with them where they, you might say I have 3 over 7 plus x plus 2 over 7. And then they think, well, I can just take this x and move it out. You cannot do that. That is bad because these brackets are there. So when you have something 3 over 7 plus 3, the 7 plus 3 must be done first, and then the 3 would come second. So this would actually be 3 tenths, although commonly I see students say it's 3 sevenths plus 3 thirds, which it is not. Multiplication signs. A lot of students forget that when we drop the multiplication symbol between the 3 and the 4, that this represents either multiplication with either the x or the dot. One of the common areas that students don't recognize is nothing changes if I add 0. So look at this example here. This is an example from the grade uh, 10 and 11 curriculum. It's called completing the square. And so here we add 0. Nothing changes. This line to this line, nothing changed. So I conveniently choose this middle value, plus 2x and minus 2x. Formula. This comes from a general formula that we're not going to go over right now. But suffice to say, there is a way to determine how, what to put in between. As a result of this, we then factor. And this group factoring, I'm not going to go over at this time, but it is there, and you can see it giving us our final answer. Multiply by 1. Students often forget that if you just have a rogue, or uh, you know, rogue is a good word, if you have a rogue letter like A plus B, that there's actually a 1 in front of those numbers. And the same goes when we're talking division. If I have 2 thirds times 4, students sometimes will say, well, that's 8 twelfths, which it is not. 
it is actually two-thirds times four over one. Here, putting in the one actually helps us see top to top, bottom to bottom, and we would get eight-thirds as our answer. Of course, we see we tend to also forget multiplying by zero. Anything times zero is zero. So you technically, at any given time, let's say we have the statement two plus three x, there are also zero x squareds and zero y squareds, and there are no happy faces. Well, in this case, I guess that's a no sad face. And there are no x, y terms. We could put as many of these as we want, multiply by zero, and we're not doing anything. We're not changing anything. But students tend to forget that these symbols are there. And each of these invisible symbols shows up in different problems all the time. I find going over this topic at the beginning of a course helps students, but I also regularly refer back to it. In the long run, I would design this as a poster sitting around the room that students can then see and see tangible examples of how to use it. I'm now going to review exponents. Exponents are very tricky, but we're going to start from the basics, so let's get to it. Remember repeated addition. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 12. Well, that's where we have 3 times 4 is 12. That's when we moved from about grade 2 to grade 3. You might start seeing introductions of multiplication. I like to explain this as what you add and how many times you add it. Now, if you're familiar with math, you know that 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3. This is not always true, but in the regular math most people are used to, it is. Well, we see that 4 times 3 would mean 4 plus 4 plus 4, which makes 12. And so then we see we're adding 4 three times. We're adding 4 three times. So consider it with repeated multiplication. 2 times 2 times 2. We needed, or not we, but mathematicians said, if you're repeating multiplication, there might be patterns in that. And it turns out there are, and there are rules that come with that. And that's where all of the exponent rules come from. It is just repeated multiplication. A lot of students, for example, might remember that 2 squared is 2 times 2. But as soon as they see 2 cubed, they don't know what to do. So here's what I do. I start with 2 times 2 times 2. It's, an, it's a, the easiest exponent to work with. And students will be able to do that kind of math mentally in their head. 2 cubed. So the bottom number, in this case, represents what you multiply. And the top number indicates how many times. Unlike more multiplication, the order does matter. Notice here, when I reverse the numbers, I get something totally different. Why do we do that? Here you see 2 to the power of 10, which gives us a really big number, 1024. And we can go to large numbers. For example, there are approximately 1 times 10 to the power of, I think I, when I last calculated it, 72 atoms in the universe. That's a pretty big number. Hard to imagine one with 72 zeros. And also you know, where that calculation comes from. I could be off, by the way, by a factor of 100 or 1,000, and I'd still be pretty accurate. So let's see what ne what's next. We now consider, once we understand this repeated addition, or sorry, repeated multiplication, let's look at the different rules. Rule one is addition. So here we start with 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 5. Notice that I expand it out. I show how many 2s there are. And if you count them, you see that there are 10. This means I can add the exponents, and we see that represented in this rule right here. We also can recognize that subtraction would be a, a possibility too. And so if we look at subtraction, we, we represent it in the form of a fraction. Here you see 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 7 times divided by 4, 2 times 2. Notice I can cancel these out. This is because 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's why I'm canceling these things out. That leaves me with 128 over 4, which is 32. But let's examine that. That is also 2 to the power of 5. How many 2s are there? We count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This gives us our second rule, subtraction. Something divided by something, you can subtract the exponents. What do you do when you have negative exponents? These ones are really tricky. A lot of students get this wrong. I refer to it as flipping. You flip the exponent. I'm going to go into this in more detail, but essentially, if you see a number represented with a negative exponent, it goes to the bottom. And if you see it in the bottom, it can go to the top. Remember, negative exponents are how many times you divide a given number. That's what they really mean, if you're looking for a, a, a tangible example of what they mean. Let's now look at the zero exponent. So you have something divided by something 
and we use our former rule, a minus b, and we see that that's 2 to the power of 0. So anything raised to the power of 0 is actually 1. A million, 567,321, or a negative number. They all equal 1. The, there's a lot of mystery behind this. It took a long time for mathematicians to agree and come to the understanding that this is what an exponent to the power of zero means. But just remember this as a general rule. It is very important, and a lot of students tend to forget. It also is one of those hidden math areas. So if I see the number two, this is technically two times one, or two times one to the power of zero. Or I could think of it as two times a million to the power of zero, which is just two times one. So sometimes mathematicians will add this in, this piece, and massage it and split it out. I'm not going to go into the details, but that is a math trick that is often used. Next, we look at brackets. So what happens if you have a complex thing and there's brackets? You need to distribute the exponent to each part. I can't emphasize that enough. So let's look at why. It's because you take the thing and you repeatedly multiply it. 2 times 2 times 2 and 3 times 3 times 3 in the denominator, which gives us 2 thirds cubed over 3 cubed. Let's look at this example. The 2 expands in. So 2 to the times negative 4. Sorry, not 2 times negative 4. Negative 4 to the power of 2. You also see 2 to the power of 2 and 5 to the power of 2. They all matter in the case of this question. Now let's look at a power of a power. Rule number 6. Power of a power. So this is when we're multiplying an exponent to an exponent. So remember, we take whatever it is, and we multiply it by itself three times. 3 squared, 3 squared, 3 squared. 1, 2, 3. Well, 3 squared, 3 squared, 3 squared is 3 times 3, 3 times 3, 3 times 3. That gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's our answer. From this we can, this example, you can see that when you raise an, an exponent to an exponent, it's like multiplying those numbers 2 times 3. So that's where we get this rule, multiplying the exponents. Let's examine the negative exponents one more time. So remember that the top is the numerator and the bottom is the denominator. What if we divide by a fraction? Here it is, 1 divided by a half. In other words, how many halves fit inside 1? Well, two of them do. 1 divided by a half. Use your calculator really quick if you need a verification. When we divide by a fraction, that fraction gets flipped and changed to multiplication. So here we see 1 divided by a half is the same as 1 times 2 over 1. It is flipped here. The negative exponent flips the base. It takes the whole thing. So notice that this is actually 2 over 1 to the power of negative 1. So everything flips. Similarly, if we look at 1 half to the power of negative 1, it flips, becomes 2 over 1. So let's look at a more deep example. 2 to the negative 2 over 3 to the negative 2. Here we take the 2 and we flip it. It becomes 1 half squared. Then we take the 3 and we flip it. And it becomes 3 over 1 squared. Another way of looking at it would be here. We keep the 2 to the negative 2 on the outside. And we just flip. And, and, and we, we, we maintain them, but I've separated them. You see how I've separated them? This one... I just put on the left and the other one on the right. Now I flip their locations. The 2 goes to the denominator. The 3 flips up to the numerator. Two different ways of approaching this problem. You may find ex negative exponents difficult, but in general, if I have 1 over 4 to the power of minus 1, that's the same as 4 over 1 to the power of 1. Notice that the sign changes from negative to positive. One more example. I might have 2 over 7 to the power of 3, negative 3. Well, that would be 7 over 2 to the power of 3. Notice I flip the numbers, and the exponent becomes positive. You may ask yourself, and by the way, if you're not interested in extending this, this is not fully necessary for the grade 9 curriculum, but it is a common topic, one that students struggle with across subjects, so I'm going to cover it anyway. If we look at variables, we can treat them the same as numbers. And the rules don't change. If you look back to before, I was using numbers. I'm going to use the same rules, but with letters. So here we look at the product rule, or adding the exponents. x to the a times x to the b is x to the a plus b. Here we see that I can divide them. x to the a over x to the b is x to the a minus b. 
I can multiply them. Here it would be negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. And we see that x to the a raised to the power of b is just x to the a times x to the b. Or sorry, a times b. There we go. Remember the flip rule. Just because you have a letter doesn't change anything. The behavior of the, of the exponent is the same. x to the minus 3 would be the same as 1 over x cubed. The zero rule still applies, even for variables. It is a very common calculus question to examine this idea in a lot more detail. Now we look at some combinations. This is where students get tricky, but remember, you just got to keep your rules in front of you. I highly recommend for beginners to keep the rules in front of them while working. First thing you always do is you look at brackets, then you simplify. The brackets help you with distributing the exponent properly. So here we see the 2 going to the 4 and the x squared divided by x. Then we start simplifying. 4 squared is 16. x to the 2 over x to the 1 creates this 2 minus 1. This leaves the final answer. If we look at the next one, again, you see me drawing these lines. I encourage students regularly to draw the line. It helps them remember to do it. So the cube is going to go to the 3, the x, and the y squared. So here we see it. 3 cubed, x cubed, and 2 times 3 makes 6. I kept all this other stuff on the outside. I don't care about it. I'm going to deal with it later. Now you see me in the bottom part. I'm addressing it with these red lines. I take the 2. That multiplies with the 27. The x cubed multiplies with the x. The y to the 6 deals with the y. Notice that I did that over here just to show you on a separate area. Now if we look at our last example. We have a 2 and it's being distributed and we have a negative 3 and it's being distributed. Notice that I take the 2 and I distribute it to each part. There they are. I also took the negative 3. I haven't changed it yet. I haven't flipped it. You could flip it, but I don't recommend doing too many things at one time. I then simplify the top and I start combining the bottoms. So let me draw your attention to some of those. I keep the x's together. That's where you get this 4 minus minus 3. A little bit of integer subtraction there. I also then move on to the y's, where we see y to the 2 divided by y to the negative 6. 2 minus minus 6. Again, important to consider. Lastly, we look at the actual number itself. This one I'm just going to leave as it is. Negative 3 to the power of negative 3, I'm going to deal with. I'm going to first start simplifying my exponents. So I do that. I simplify my exponents, which you see here on the right. 4 minus minus 3 creates 7, because that's 4 plus 3. 2 minus minus 6 is 8. Now, having dealt with the variables, I draw my attention to the numbers. I use the flip rule. This goes into the denominator. Sorry, the numerator. 4 times negative 3 cubed. That means you get 4 times, if you use your calculator, negative 27, which leaves us with this lovely negative 108 x to the 7, y to the 8. Again, remember, keep the rules in front. When you're instructing this, start at the beginning. Start with addition. I find that addition to multiplication is a transition students understand. So you show addition to multiplication. Then you label it. And you would label it as what you do and how many times. Or, that would be with multiplication. What you, what you do, in this case, it would be add. If we're looking at exponents, it would be what you multiply to the power of how many times. The location of the number changes what it does. It is so important, and yet students don't realize that numbers in different locations actually do different things. Lastly, remember, take your time, show students one step at a time. Each of these rules for the first exposure would be its own lesson. So scaffolding is super important. And of course, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of practice. The last component of this video is going to be a uh, connecting across the curriculum explanation. So here, just remember, it's not graded, but you're looking at a level. You can choose one, locally developed, applied college, university. 
and you can look at the 9, 10, 11, and 12. The goal here is to look at the overall expectations. There are two or three of them for each unit, so 8 to 10 total. See if you can draw a relationship connecting the grade 9 curriculum to the grade 10, into the 11, and, if possible, the 12. I would recommend dividing up the task between four people. Each person examines each one. Then you get together for maybe 10, 15 minutes and put together a diagrammatic representation. Use these guiding questions to help you prepare. When we're in class, I'm going to be asking people to be ready to present their findings, but overall we're going to discuss it as a large group. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please send me an email, and I look forward to seeing you next class.